the Kratos Heavy Assault Tank. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and war gear of the Warhammer 40k setting. The grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. And today, we shall be discussing one of my new favorite pieces of war gear. I mean, it's no melter, melty melty, but it still brings my heart great joy to see it. Play with it. Unleash its astonishing firepower on my friend's armies and chortle as I watch them pick up pieces from the board. For it has a reach and output that truly makes the iron warrior inside me purr with satisfaction. Though, of course, I can only be speaking of the Kratos Battle Tank. A corker, oh, yes it is. But I shall gush more later. I feel we should now hear its lore, and of course, a wee tale to show, not just tell, how this beast is used on the battlefield. From the Bald Library. Temptation denied. Red. Everything is red. Our armor, our weapons, all is red. The skies, they bleed. Scarlet clouds drip blood on everything in view. On us, the enemy, the land, the sea. We believe they do this on purpose. Somehow, the enemy knows of our weakness, our flaw. We are not only in a battle for our lives, but our very souls. Alas, I am one to whom the floor is strong. I can smell the blood. I can practically taste it. Even inside of this cockpit, I can. I must resist. It is why I am here, not out there, where I should be, standing in the lines, the last time we faced them. I near unmanned myself. I was so close. Shuddering in the fits of rage, prepared to tear off my helm and run into the enemy and lash out with fists and teeth. All I wanted was to grab them, bring them into my embrace and drain them dry. But they do not have blood. We know this also. Whatever they are, they are not who we were expecting. The Cygnus campaign. The war master had sent us, the mighty Sanguinius, and the Ninth to end the matter. For we were told that the most foul of enemies had not been destroyed. Somehow, the Nephilim had endured. We blood angels slaughtered them when we met them. The white scars, led by the great Khan, they had found the Nephilim's homeworld, had rained death on the cradle of this evil. And so, we thought that they had been exterminated. Yet the War Master stated that this was not so. That they had invaded the Sickness system and brought all of our people, all of humanity there, onto their knees. The Nephilim were filthy Xenos who gained sustenance from the prayers and adoration of sentient life and they picked humanity as their lunch of choice. A mistake we punished them for. We thought them dead. But when we got to the Cygnus system, there was Enos all right. But they were not Nephilim. Strange, cavorting evils, hordes of them who had twisted the mortal population to their wills. Similar, but not the same as the Nephilim. They were not in need of supplication, as the Nephilim required. These ones were different. No blood had they, no form of substance. For when we slew them, they simply drifted away on the breeze, and they affected reality as no other we had faced. As I said, the rain was red, because they had transubstantiated it into blood. The rules of physics broke when they clustered, wounds that would finish even Astartes, these things shrugged off with ease. They felt no pain. They were not Nephilim at all. But with the angel guiding us, 
We knew no fear. More accurately, most of us did not. I did not fear the enemy, but I feared their effect on me. To become a drooling maniac, broken down to a beast. The thirst was so strong. So my sergeant came and offered me either battle barge garrison duty or to come to battle, but within a weapon of war that would permit me to truly hurt the enemy. And so I and a few others with similar issues were collected and we formed a new unit for this campaign only and we were granted the use of an old lady of the field. We had near stopped using them, but for this campaign... Speed was less important than impact. And so, they brought out the old Kratos battle tanks. I was given command of this one, and I never regretted my decision. Far better to be encased within this majestic tank than to be held in orbit on the barge, and by all that is just and right in the universe. We brought vengeance down on these foul Xenos filth. The campaign was costly, but when we hit Cygnus Prime, it escalated so much. Where before we faced tens of thousands of them, Xenos and their human puppets, here we faced entire tides of them. Hundreds of thousands of frothing madmen and women mixed amongst these alien filth. And there was nothing like it in all of my experience. As we advanced, the blood rain began again punctuated and illuminated by streaks of red lightning crashing amongst our lines, frying some of us that were in the air, and before long, the blood that fell down was not only their horrid simulcrum, but the very life's blood of our blood angel brothers. For these Xenos had a dizzying array of forms and functions, chariots that flew in the air, discs that carried mad sorcerous beings that melted and twisted all before them, and our dawnbreaker cohorts, our angels' tears and assault marines were dropping from the skies as they engaged the airborne filth. Like a fresco from myth, our angels fought against what seemed to be demons in the skies. I had to concentrate on what was before me. The line was buckling. They needed immediate support. And for the life of me, I cursed this old lady for her lack of momentum. But when we got within range... I ate every last word. For this, this was where she shined. The line company was on the verge of being overrun when we finally ploughed into range. Our sister Kratos tank reached out with her Elias cannons a melter blast gun, slamming into a column of enraged mega beasts that threatened our line. Each one she hit was torn to pieces by the fury of her guns. Now it was our turn. We moved ever closer then unleashed our fire. Our battle cannon explosives ripped huge gouts out of their lines, the auto cannons, heavy bolters and havoc launchers, sending out entire waves of shot that tore whatever they hit to pieces. We advanced, perpetually firing. A few of the foe now brought up more heavy assets of their own, but their firepower merely made our flare shieldings light up. Our sister tank melted one after another of them as we kept the foot rabble back. We did not slow or stop. Now we were here, we formed the spear tip and pushed into them hard. Behind us were Spartans filled with Terminators. We would not be overrun even if our ammunition failed us. And we went on like this all day and all night. It was one of the hardest engagements I had ever fought. But inside our Kratos, it was one of the most satisfying I had ever participated in. Surely, with weapons such as these, we will cleanse this galaxy. We will slay every last enemy of humanity. Now, before I unleash a true gushathon on you all, let us hear the hard lore of this phenomenal unit. Officially designated the Kratos Heavy Assault Tank, this beast is one of the most storied of all of the armor used in the heresy period. Why, you might ask. For it actually hails all of the way back to the very first conflict led by the Emperor, the Unification War. 
when the Thunder Warriors were marching tens of thousands strong into the armies of techno-barbarians in even worse travesties. The Unification War was one of the most hard-fought of all. Its scale was always going to be utterly dwarfed by the later Great Crusade, but it can be argued that the Unification War was the hardest the Emperor ever fought. And in those days, when the more stable Space Marines were only beginning to see action, when the 10,000, the Custodes themselves, were in the very forefront of the action surrounding the Emperor himself, who bestowed the battlefield like a wrathful god. So hard was the fighting. But there, too, was the Kratos Heavy Assault Tank. When the Emperor then went to Mars and brought the Mechanicum into the fold of his budding Imperium, they took this chassis and improved on it further. Now the Kratos was seen as mostly a linebreaker unit, steaming towards the enemy lines it had such heavy armor that it compared to the durability of the Land Raider, making it near impervious to small arms fire and resistant to many dedicated anti-armor weapons. Hence, charging it right down the throat of the enemy was the entire goal of the officers who led these formations. Yet, when in position, the Kratos could unleash a deluge of firepower, able to crack nearly any defensive line and buckle any formation whatsoever. It is often said that the Kratos was a middle ground between the Sakaran battle tanks and the mammoth Fellblade or Falchion super heavy battle assets. Usually equipped with searchlights and a dozer blade, it could also carry hunter killer missiles and, Emperor be praised, the now legendary Flare Shield. A Flare Shield is an ancient piece of equipment from the Dark Age of Technology. The closest equivalent is that of a void shield. Of course, they were nowhere near as powerful as a void shield, but the electromagnetic field generator of the flare shield was enough to protect against most weapons below titan grade munitions. So even if you were able to punch a hole through the kind of armor of a land raider, you would still need to overwhelm the flare shields first. And this would necessitate a foe concentrating vast amounts of firepower on this one tank to even hope to pierce its shielding. And now we get to my favorite bit, the direct firepower. Oh. Now there were three variants of the Kratos main turret mounted heavy weapon. The first was a Volkite Cardinal, a huge Volkite weapon able to pepper entire formations and rake down lines of infantry no matter how well armored. The second was a Melter Blast Gun, Melty melty indeed. At a range beyond even that of a multi-melter, this whopper can dish out enough firepower to smash opposition armor with ease, turning entire columns of tanks into so many puddles of gloop. And now the last, but by no means the least, the Kratos Battle Cannon. With a healthy mid-range and two types of munitions, this is a beast. Shooting armored piercing rounds, it can punch through most targets, be they armor or static emplacements. No fortress was proof from its caress. <laughs> but the high explosive rounds would create huge regions where infantry and light armor would evaporate under its firepower. But there is even more. For the Kratos was more like a roving fortress, and the supporting firepower was everything a dictator could wish for. Sponsored mounted weapons from heavy flamers to las cannons or more Volkite firepower. The hull weapon could also be las cannon or similar grade of weapon too, or just heavy bolters, of course. Pintle weapons also, from havoc launchers to combi weapons, and it even included a coaxial mounted auto cannon for range finding and target acquisition. And when you add all of this up. You can kit it out to have more las cannons and battle cannon fire than should be legal. Or go for an array of heavy bolters, volkites, and other anti-infantry firepower that could evaporate entire squads or formations in one unfettered deluge of destruction. It is simply the gift that keeps on giving. Now the history of the tank was not as illuminous. For one thing came to be its downfall, its speed. It was designed to be a troop support in massed engagements 
or line breaker and fortification smasher. But as the legions of space marines became ever more lethal, they found that speed was actually their greatest ally, and the Kratos could not keep up with their madcap advance. Hence, it was soon rotated out of the main battle lines and replaced by the more swift and easily produced Predator tanks. When the Horus Heresy caused the legions to slaughter one another, the Kratos was eventually rotated back into the line, as casualties in other tanks had been so high that they far outstripped the production capacity of an Imperium left in tatters. And when the Kratos tanks were fielded, they were destroyed in such numbers that their like would never be seen again. Few chapters have even one of these queens of the battlefield. Only those of the first founding would have had any, and over 10,000 years of attrition and constant warfare, they have fallen one by one, until their very silhouette is now a thing of legend. One might see a Kratos, but it is now likely to be in use by the only armies that remember that great conflagration, the Horus Heresy, the Chaos Space Marines. But even then, this would be an exception that proves the rule. Hence, you will not see these tanks on the battlefield of the grim darkness of the far future, but there is one place you can still find them. In the Age of Darkness. In the past. Ah, the Kratos, how I love thee! It is no secret that I now have a growing Iron Warrior's army for the Horus Heresy, and this beast is one of my near auto-picks. I have to honestly talk myself out of playing it in every game, and this is one unit I can state fulfills my holy grail, my triumvirate of satisfaction. It is not just the model, not just the law, but also its effect on the battlefield. The Kratos ticks off every single box I could imagine, as it goes together like a dream, and one does not even have to magnetize it for changing loadouts. It is that well put together as a model and tank. It is gorgeous. Its silhouette is striking, its power unquestionable, its utility so overwhelming that I honestly struggle to find excuses to not field it, just to mix up the battles I play with my friends. The new plastic models for the Horus Heresy are worlds apart from their previous versions. The plastic kits go together like a dream, look amazing, and can be transported without fear of them shattering. And I have to concede that I am playing far more Horus Heresy than anything else when I get the time to do so, of course, less often than I would like. But then, I have always been a player first and foremost. But all I can say is this. I know the rules seem intimidating, but if you are not feeling 10th edition, or simply want to try a new game, then Horus Heresy is surprisingly fun. It takes time to learn, but it is an elegant and fun system with so much more to offer than just marine killing marine. It allows you to see the vast arrays of weapons of the old times, to field massed blocks of beakies, and of course, access to this terrifying tank. Now I have not covered the Spartan yet, which I love as much as the Kratos, but that we will get to soon, I promise, because the Spartan like this gorgeous Kratos, is just so good. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. Do please consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then hit the notifications button, as I would not want you to miss out. And hopefully see you Friday. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.